Internet, hello and welcome to a very special Patreon review, our first of the year. I was very sick and now we're getting back to it. And this is usually a live format, but as I told you guys last year, we're gonna be doing less lives. So this review is for Klaus. Now YouTube doesn't generally like live streams and I want this review to reach more people. So one of the reasons I'm not doing this live is because I love Klaus so much. I want this video to reach as many people as possible. Now, this is a Patreon review. This review is brought to you by the great John Getz. John Getz usually has me watching lots of great animation. We're going to be going back to My Hero Academia next. This very month, later this month, we're going to talk some more My Hero Academia. This video was meant for December, but I got the Rona. Klaus is a movie that is, yes, a Christmas movie, but it is a movie that can last all year round. I'm so glad I watched this movie. I'm glad I watched this movie in January. I'll be glad to watch it in April. I'll be glad to watch it in the middle of summer. Klaus is a very, very special Christmas movie that is full of so much heart, so much wonder, so many unique takes on things we know and revere and love. It is a movie about the meaning of Christmas from an all new perspective. It's a superhero origin story for Santa Claus. And I loved it so very much. It had Emperor's New Groove vibes. It had all of the things I like about this style of animation, which is unique in its own way. The style of animation I'm referring to is the 2D hand-drawn animation, but this is a 2D hand-drawn film with 3D augmented shading effects, the very first of its kind. So the movie is unique in both its sensibilities, in its storytelling, in its animation styles, in everything, and this movie, I gave a very rare four and a half out of five stars. I so rarely give a movie a solid A. I've only given 18 movies in history five out of five stars. Four and a half stars, there's only a couple hundred movies I've ever given. Out of the 3,000 movies I've seen, this is a very rare thing. I love this movie. This is now one of my favorite animated films. This is now going to be added to my Christmas rotation. I can't wait to share this movie with people. I can't wait to show this movie to people. Uh, the end of the non-spoiler section is right about here. So if you haven't seen it yet, get the fuck out of here. But... I'm about to go into my notes of the entire film for the patron reviews. I write down notes throughout the journey of the movie and I talk about my experience as I'm watching it live. And again, we're gonna be doing My Hero Academia next and we're gonna be doing a Wu-Tang documentary for the great producer of this channel, the wonderful, the awesome Mr. Curtis Mason. So I'm gonna dive into my notes. I gave you a couple seconds to get out of here in case you haven't seen the movie yet. We're gonna get into full spoilers here in just a second. So this is my now spoiler review of the wonder that is Netflix's Klaus, available right now on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, go over there, get out of here, Klaus. All right, diving in. Ooh, this animation is pretty. I am loving the cell shading and the cinematography. Every angle used is gorgeous and the use of deep background to foreground action. The actual Z axis was used beautifully here and they really made that sing. This movie is stunning. The color palette is exceptional and weirdly unique. There's a lot of warmth in the cold. You feel the frigidness of this world, but also there's a lot of warmth in the heart of the film and they use colors to bring that heart out of the characters. They use colors to make you feel warm. It's, it's really wonderful. Why does this give me Emperor's New Groove vibes? Uh, the voice actors we discussed later, but there was definitely some Kronk and, uh, and Cusco vibes going on here. Such cool OG 2, 2D blended with modern 3D. Uh, haha, postman by way of learning responsibility, like shucking clams as a chef. I love that the dad punished him in the most um, redundant way. Just like when you become a chef, there's like a, a trial of like shucking oysters. This is likewise uh, reminded me of that. I enjoyed it. If you've ever seen Burnt Bradley Cooper, exceptional film. Great world building and side characters in Schmierensburg. Badass girl is total badass. I love how immediately I love these characters. I love how immediately I like the leads and the supporting characters. All of that really sings to me very quickly. Badass girl is total badass. Ends up, she's Rashida Jones. Wait, is that Norm? Norm is one of the voices in this film, which I found out later was his last voice performance, but hearing Norm immediately warmed my heart. This is fun. I really enjoy the time-lapse gag. There's a great, great moment of comedic uh, darkness that I really enjoyed the way they executed it. Uh, haha, great twist on terrifying toy trope with Santa himself. Toys can be scary. Santa can be scary. Santa's workshop, workshop can therefore be scary because of toys. They use this entire dynamic very, very beautifully plus some great Norse myth vibes. I really enjoyed the Norse myth vibes. And then this obviously becomes a story that incorporates Norway even more. There's a lot that really just sings from the opening uh, moments of this film all the way through, and it just elevates. It's a movie that starts out 
wonderful. This movie started out and I was like, this is already like a BB plus and it only gets better landing at that very rare four and a half star mark. Again, a very unique film, a very unique experience. Uh, I love the letter butterfly effect that makes me so happy the way the there's a there's a letter in this film and the way it dances about and ends up changing the entire course of the film but they set it up from very early on I love the cascading consequences of this movie and that's one of my favorite ones is the letter butterfly effect intense J.K. Simmons is glorious J.K. Simmons has very few actual individual lines of dialogue but each one is so important and so wonderful and so well delivered all of them count the first time you hear his voice you're just Man, intense J.K. Simmons. Uh, love, love, love this take. Uh, the chimney, naturally. And then I thought that was going to be a joke about... So there's a moment where he, he, he launches our protagonist into the chimney. And I thought that was going to be a joke because he would know that the chimney is a way in. I didn't realize this was going to start the actual origins of Santa Claus. So at this point, I knew so little about the film. I didn't know this was going to be a discovery of Santa's trademarks by way of this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful storytelling. So that moment I was like, the chimney, naturally Santa would know. And then I found out this is the origins of Santa Claus. Love this, a superhero origin movie. Uh, oh, the present delivery opening scene, the amount you feel for this kid with the present delivery, the amount you remember why you love Christmas, the amount you remember what it's like to open the perfect thing, all of that happening, and Santa activating this this warmth, this, this grizzled old man seeing and remembering joy. It is so beautiful, that sequence. It is one of the best animated sequences I've ever seen, hard stop. I wrote in all caps, I love this. This animation is so emotive. That was some magical Santa reborn sequence. I thought this was Santa reborn, not Santa born. This movie's magical. Um, and now he has post work, precious. Everybody's winning, loving this. Work ethic is born, hell yeah, rich boy. I love that he develops a work ethic through this. I love that he just wants to go home. I love everyone's uh, arc in this. Everyone's journey makes sense. Everyone's backstory makes sense. Everyone's work um, motivation. Everyone's motivation is so beautifully handled here. And each of their arcs landing from their motivation is wonderful. I love this film. I hope he ends up being Santa's postman or something. He delivers the return messages or something. Again, we're 30 minutes in. I don't know what magic I'm about to experience. Uh, is Rich Boy magic? What is this weather wizardry? Uh, I don't know what's going on with the weather at this point. Later on, we find out what the, w the wind represents and it's really beautiful. Um, that frog is awesome. Got a lot of love for the frog. Playing, what are they doing playing? Are they, uh, have they outlawed happiness in Schmearsburg? At this point, I thought maybe toys are outlawed. Playing is outlawed. Maybe that's why Santa's been removed. Again, I don't know at this point what Santa represents. Uh, and then you find out that it's the types of residents, Hatfields and McCoys kind of thing. There's a feud in the city. This is a really cool um, way to show the feud. Like the town you find out is built on spite and hatred. Of course, we got to fix that shit. Love that whole thing, the Hatfield and McCoy situation. Uh, there's this little Lilo and Stitch vibe kid and her whole vibe is denied. Uh, I love that the little girl never speaks English. They have some authentic voices here. I talk about that more as we go along. I love to love this little kid and the wonder and magic she brought to our, our rich boy postman. Uh, now the teacher has purpose. We met the badass Rashida Jones. Now the badass Rashida Jones as a teacher has purpose. Again, her motivations, her giving up, her whole trajectory, her arc. It is wonderful. I would watch a movie about just her. Uh, love all this setup and payoff. Now we're on the second act and I'm already feeling set up and payoff. It only gets better. Um, fun old Disney whimsy score. The score of this movie is so magical. I noticed even in the middle of it. I'm not usually one to notice a score. It's just not something I usually hone in on, but it's so good it, it caught me. Love the recurring moments and I love the chimney credit and the legend being born of fear. Now I'm starting to notice that he is the one that causes these legends. So the legend of the chimney is born of fear and there's so many moments that lay the groundwork for all the mythology we have for Santa Claus as happening in real time through this story and why they came to be wonderful storytelling. Um, that's great. Oh shit, it's Jason Schwartzman as Rich Kid. I looked up the cast at this point. It's Jason Schwartzman as our lead. Um, the Cole origins I really enjoy. And then the Naughty List, how that came to be. I love how the Cole came to be. Rashida Jones, Will Sasso. That is Norm and Joan Cusack. What a cast. Rashida Jones, Will Sasso, Norm, Joan Cusack. I mean, come on. Uh, and then, of course, J.K. Simmons as Santa. J.K. Simmons, one of my favorite actors on the planet. The kids want to learn. Rashida, help the children learn. Uh, just like in real life, teachers got to use their own money for supplies. That is too real. Uh, I've got friends that are teachers. My best friend in the world is a teacher, and it is bullshit the way we treat them and don't pay them enough. And um, it really hit me that she's spending her own money that she had saved because that often is what happens because we don't take care of our teachers well. Um, ooh, so it's literally 2D, 3D. So I'm looking into the behind the scenes of the movie. I press pause to get some food. Um... 2D animated plus 3D lighting techniques that is so rad. 
And apparently this town used to exist in Norway in the 17th century. It's a real town. Uh, and then I'm back to the movie. Haha, <laughs> curmudgeon Klaus breaks. J.K. Simmons is a delight always. There's a moment of levity from J.K. Simmons. There's a bond forming between him and Jason Schwartzman. Loving that so much. He sees you when you're sleeping, Origins. It checks it twice. Again, this laying seeds for the mythology is wonderful. So this film apparently developed for 10 years. It idled until 2015. In 2017, it was acquired by Netflix and was released in 2019. It apparently did gangbusters for Netflix. Um, I've got those stats in a little bit. I think 30 million people watched it in like a week. Um, but it idled for a decade, which is insane how good this movie is. It took that long to get made. Think about that when you're trying to do something creative. Sometimes even the best stories and the best scripts take time. Keep pushing. I'm glad this movie exists. I needed this movie. This takes work and a decade of life sometimes, and I'm so appreciative. Thank you to the team behind this. Uh, the kids get good. They're learning lessons. I love the morality of this. I love that the kids are learning cause and effect. Uh, reward based sometimes is what kids need. I love this whole dynamic of the town cleaning up, starting with the kids, going to the adults, going to the elderly. Everyone wants good and their town gets good accordingly. Good deeds spreading. And that's one of the, the themes of the film. Uh, Sammy really didn't learn English. She did all of the voiceover work. The kid that played Sammy, uh, the, the, it, they went to Norway, the production traveled to Norway and they used mimicry and miming to make it work. So that is an actual authentic voice from a kid speaking that language. I love that so much. Um, he's halfway 3000 mailed. Whoa. Netflix reported that the film was viewed nearly 30 million times in its first month on the platform, 30 million views in a month for a movie that wouldn't get made. People like 2D animation. People want more of this. And the story's so good. Uh, Klaus once worked as a mall Santa while pursuing acting in college. That's right. J.K. Simmons once worked as a mall Santa while pursuing acting in college. He was a real-life mall Santa. Love that very much. One good deed leads to another. I love that. The moral, the theme of this movie is that one good deed leads to another. And that's what happens with the presence. And that spreads and that fixes the town. Remember, one good deed. Be good. Do a little good thing. And it'll be a good thing. But it always spreads. One good deed leads to another. Uh, a sleigh is born and it flies. Santa Origins continues. That's probably my favorite Santa Origins moment is the sleigh flying and the kid in disbelief and how the sleigh happens. All of that sequence is just lovely. I then wrote this movie fucking owns. I just wrote in big letters fucking owns. I am about it. Santa's laughing. He's ho ho hoing. I am so excited. Oh, this is Norm's final film role. I found out at this point. Um, it got an Oscar qualifying, Oscar qualifying film run and was nominated. So sometimes that one week works. I wish I could have seen this in theaters. Again, John Getz, thank you. Thank you for, for having me watch this. This was truly a magical experience. Johnniness has been spread. No evil gatherings. Full on Christmas has been invented. Now they're doing Christmas on the day. All oh, the pain in his voice, even before the reveal. Um, the moment where we find out what happened to Mrs. Claus is so brutal. The pain in J.K. Simmons' voice, the performance here is so wonderful. Before the reveal, the the loving missing, but not like, you can tell he still loves her and, and it's such a unique kind of hurt. And I love that there's still warmth in it because he loves her still. Magical performance. Uh, Klaus, rich kid team up making toys. Uh, the present for the Sammy girl. I dig the change to not have her speak English. I dig the authenticity. They didn't have her speak English. They were going to. I love the present that he delivered. I love that whole sequence. I'm going to say I love things a lot. I'm just reading you guys my notes. Um, uh, the greatest things you ever know are invisible. There's a song and it's one of now my favorite animated songs. The greatest things you'll ever know are invisible. That is so fucking real. And that is so important. Love, invisible. Pride can be good or bad. Invisible. Uh, happiness, invisible. Like there's so many things that we have that we take for granted because they're not tangible. So many of the important things are invisible and love is so important. So I love that message. Um, the inevitable 6K betrayal reveal is gonna hurt before it even happens. I'm feeling the fallout. I'm so worried about them finding out why he was actually there and I'm feeling it. Um, oh, the toys were his kids that never came. Oof, poor Mrs. Claus, that whole thing. She's the wind, yo. Uh, pretty stupid to leave this place now. It's a Christmas wonderland of happiness, dog. Why would you leave? Why would you leave, homeboy? Like, he's so, he made perfection. Why would you go anywhere? I, 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 I get the conflict, but I love that the resolution at the end. But yeah, I love that they made Christmas. They made a, a magical wonderland. Um, so yeah, the good snowman, we've seen the stabby snowman, we've seen the evolution of the snowman, the, the snowman kind of represents the arc of the children, I love that visual representation, I love that whole, that whole setup, the good snowman reveal made me so happy, a true act of goodwill always sparks another, that's the actual quote, it's repeated and I wrote it down, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on to that, it's really important, again, four and a half star film, this is one of my favorite new movies, 
Um, no, not the perceived betrayal being on Christmas. As soon as they announced the date, I'm like, this one is going to happen. It's going to break my heart. Santa suit, full on Santa suit. Now we got Christmas, we got Santa, we got sleighs, we got mitts, we got chimneys, we got everything, we got Christmas. Um, sneaky stay off boat moment was sneaky. Enjoyed that. Haha, ha, they're not attached to me. That whole comedic sequence is Schwartzman and JK. Why is it not attached? Then there's this great chase on a sleigh. It's really stunning. Uh, fake toy decoy, huzzah! And then the end of, oh, that was just lovely. I'm not going to say the actual very end of the movie, but it's bittersweet and lovely and powerful. And I love this movie. Uh, that is going to do it for this review. I want to keep this a little shorter than most because I do want people to see this review and I don't want the runtime of this review to be intimidating. Go watch Klaus. Hopefully you stopped watching this and you don't hear me say it in case you haven't seen it already. But we're going to be doing My Hero Academia next. We are pretty deep into the series. We're going to catch up, which makes me very excited. This video and My Hero Academia is brought to you by John Getz. Now I'm going to be teaming up with the great AJ Lancaster for... Um, Oscar stuff. I'm not going to reveal anything further, but I'm very excited about it. We're going to be teaming up separately. Uh, he's been so cool about me missing a couple videos because I was actually dying. So we're going to get to that uh, next month or the following month. And then we're also going to be doing um, rewatches starting next month. And I've got a Wu-Tang video for you guys from producer of this channel. So lots of coolness coming at you. And I'm going to be releasing videos as soon as news breaks. Uh, I don't know if you guys have no noticed my quick hits. I'm also going to try to do some fully recorded videos like this. So lots of changes come to the channel. I'm trying to grow it out. So I'm trying to listen to what YouTube wants and the algorithm. And that is going to do it for this video. As per the algorithm, I want to keep this under 17 minutes. Much love to each and every one of you. Thank you for the YouTube viewers. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you to anyone watching this. Klaus is truly spectacular. Solid A, four and a half stars. The spirit of Christmas I got to have, and I miss Christmas because I was so sick, so it was really magical to get Christmas after, thanks to this movie and thanks to John Getz. Much love, y'all. We'll see you soon.